guys, welcome to another video, and hey, welcome to my world. <laughs> I really hope you enjoy this one. This is a good tab if you're not quite a beginner anymore and you just want to push yourself a little bit further, you know? It's one of those kinds of pieces where it's not particularly hard, but it's got little bits in it that are going to make you a better player. We hope. With practice. <laughs> you can do it. All right then, so let's start at the beginning. So the right hand is going to be using Pima fingers. That just means your thumb is taking care of the E, the A, the D. So those bassy ones are all on the thumb because the thumb is strong, basically. And your index is over there in the middle on your G string. Your middle finger is on the B string and your ring finger is over here on the E string. If you're curious about your little finger, because I've seen some people trying to pluck with it lately, little finger, not, I nearly said should, it doesn't have to be, but it can be leaned on to help you position where your fingers are on the guitar. And in that case, my hand would represent the scratch plate or near the sound hole, just underneath the sound hole, so that you've got somewhere good to lean. Okay. In my case, it tends, sometimes it will hook underneath the neck so I can feel where I'm going. But remember, my hand is only up here so that you can see it. So that you can see how everything relates Otherwise it would be back down there by the sound hole. Okay, so we've talked about the Pima fingers. Now let's actually get into it then. So we're in four, four time. That just means one, two, three, four beats or three crotchet beats or three quarter note beats in a bar. They're all the same thing. Um, and we have just got the rhythm of tea, tea, coffee, coffee in our first bar. And that rhythm repeats throughout the whole piece. If it's not that rhythm, then it's bar two's rhythm, which is just T, 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 T. All right, and then bar one, we're looking at it and we can see, okay, I've got a two there, I've got a two there, and I have a three there. I wonder if it's easier if I hold down my D chord. Yes, yes it is, because there's less movement, so there's more control. Otherwise you'd have this sort of thing. Yeah, and can you hear I'm making mistakes already? I find if I've got less movement, I've got more control over the sound and it's gonna sound better and also smoother, it will ring a little bit more and be a bit prettier. That's what I'm aiming for. So let's go through it nice and slow together. Yes, there were pull-offs. I will do it slowly and then I'll talk you through it. So here we go. Let's see if you can play with me first. One, two, three, four. One, two. You know, you can play this without the pull-offs if you want, but for the sake of your development as a guitarist, I'm going to insist you try. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine if you're battling me already, but you know, just, just give it a go. So I'm plucking with my ring finger down here and I'm pulling away with the left hand. One last time so you can see. Plucking, pulling away with the other hand. And then I come back to my uh, middle finger on the B string and then I flatten and flick. So I don't tend to do it quite so dramatically as that, but I tend to, there we go, more of that kind of movement with my finger. And the idea being that I'm barring with my index finger and my thumb is about halfway down the neck, so they look like this behind. They're working as a team, so I get some good pressure. So again, I'm gonna show you that. And of course, you don't have to bar it if your wrist hurts when you bar things, don't try it. Try this version, yeah, where you come back onto it. So you'd go like that. So you're just flicking as usual with the bottom and then move it right behind this ring finger over here. Like that. One more time. There you go. Let's see if you can do it. Now we're going to try again. So just bar one. One, two, three, Four. One, two, three, and four, and... Pretty! Lovely! Good! Okay, and then into the next bar, and we're coming into... Well, you would sort of think G, and you can if you want. There's several ways we can do this with our fingers. We could go ring finger on the, the G on the E. We could go little finger over here on the D, that they've got a third fret on your B string. So it's kind of like um, how you would position your hand if you're playing G7, yeah? Like that. But you might not like it that way, so you could do it this way as well, where you have your middle finger on that G, your ring finger on the D over there, as if you were playing G like this. And 
finally, you could do it index and then middle finger over there on the three. I've seen a lot of people do that recently. And all of these are okay. They are all fine. And the thing that will help you decide which one to use is moving from that shape into it. So let's see what one my hand prefers. I'll go from the pull-offs. So I tend to go into this one then, middle finger and ring finger. Okay, let's go bar one into bar two then. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Lovely, and then we'll just do that one more time. Here we go with mnemonics. One, two, three, four. T, T, coffee, coffee, tea. T, T, T. Good, and if you need to slow this down at any point, remember you click the cog, settings, playback speed, about 75 will do you. And I encourage you to do that because I know sometimes I can go too fast for folks, or maybe I go too slow, you can speed me up as well if you go the other way. <laughs> so whatever speed you need it at, and if you need to rewind it, go over it as many times as you need to. All right, that's the glory of it being a video. The glory. All right, let's move on to <laughs> Bar free, shall we? So bar free, did you see my hand was instantly moving? I had a little look at it, my brain went, oh, A, we're on an A chord. Yeah, we kind of are. We gotta use our little finger in which case. So this is how I play bar free, I would go. T, T, coffee, coffee. All right, so yes, pull offs. Don't have to do it, but I think you should at least give it a little try. It will strengthen up your little finger. Um, and yeah, you're probably thinking, well, why have you got that two down? Why have you got this two down? Well, I've got this one down because it's used to being there with an A chord, and if I take it off, my fingers might do something scatty. They might just <laughs> lose the plot, do something they shouldn't. So if we stick together, we're stronger as a team. Um, and the other two, I'm coming to it after the three, so that's why the little finger's there. So there's logic to the madness, don't worry. So we would go, T, T, coffee, coffee. So I'd play the zero, I'd play the three, but I'd pull that off to a two, and then to a zero. Once again, we go T, T, coffee, coffee. All right, let's see if you guys can play that one. It's so nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Good. and hopefully you can see this hand just sort of held itself there dramatically and didn't do anything else when it was pulling off. It was all on the left hand. Good, and then we will just go into our next bar so we can complete this whole line. So from that A shape, can you see we've got two, three, two again? So we're coming back to D. Nice and easy, a lovely easy finish after all that complicated pulling off. All right. I think you'll be fine with the last bar, so let's rewind you all the way back. Um, let's be friendly first. Let's go bar three into four, and then in a minute we'll do the whole line. So bar three into four, counting you in. One, two, three, four. T, T, coffee, coffee, T, 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 T. Super! All right, let's rewind you all the way back to the beginning. Um, yeah, we'll stay around D. So remember, we're going from a D shape to a sort of abstract G shape into an A shape and then back to D. All right, let's go nice and steady. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Good, all right, roll the shoulders, relax for a second, have a cup of tea if you need it. <laughs> and we're gonna move on, we're gonna look at line two. Remember what I said though, if you feel like you need to do that again, please do as many times as you need to. But line two, this is gonna look fairly friendly because of what you've just done. So you're like, oh, okay, well now I can see two, three, two, so I'm probably gonna be doing something with a D chord over here. And you'd be right. So the first bar here, this is bar five, It is around D, but I'm wondering whether that might throw the majority of guitarists here. Because 
it's kind of like we don't need the F sharp. So I wonder if you might prefer going with your index and then taking the index off, popping it on the B string and then hammering it down. I don't know, there's lots of different ways of doing this bar and I want you to keep an open mind, all right, so that you can experiment yourselves because it is what it's all about. Um, but yeah, let's see how I would do it. So we go T, T, coffee, coffee. Yeah, it looks like that's what my default is here. Yeah, that was me checking the transition into the next bar, <laughs> which again, top tip, always worth doing. Cause sometimes you can go, oh, that's perfect fingering. I've done it perfectly. And then you try and get into the next bar and you realize, oh, that fingering didn't work. So I tend to go ring finger, pluck, pull it back, then get the index down. Can you see that was a slight movement, but it did come down. So it's not pulling off of that. It's just sliding down and then pulling off of that one and then hammering itself down on the G. So again, So let's see if you guys can play this, whichever way works for you, nice and steady. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. One last time with mnemonics, then we'll get into the next bar. One, two, three, four. Tea, tea, coffee, coffee. Lovely, next bar, our old friend, the abstract G. Okay, so we're gonna go T, 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 or one, two, three, four. So it's fairly friendly, this one, nothing too strenuous. I think the hardest thing is probably getting from that D shape over there onto it. So I'm not too worried about you with that bar, but let's see how you get into this. So let's go uh, bar five into bar six, or bar one and two here, okay? Let's do it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. <laughs> Just laughing at my finger. But that's okay, because I'm very lucky <laughs> that my mistake didn't sound awful because I've got the notes down of a G essentially and I didn't go too far up that I got an A in it as well. So I've just plucked a D and a B, so it doesn't matter. And I want you to embrace your mistakes too. Right, into the next bar then. Can you see all these twos were coming into an A shape? So we're gonna go T, T. It's probably one of the nicer bars for pull-off practice. So you're gonna go one, two, pluck, pull off, pluck, pull off. Quite like that. And I've used this shape so many times in other songs, I must admit this is one of the nicest ones to learn. Um, yeah, take this out as an exercise. If you struggle with your pull-offs, I think you will appreciate it. So let's do it together. Um, yeah, I don't feel I need to talk you through it again. I think you're getting the gist of what a pull-off is. So let's do it. So this is bar seven or bar three here. Okay, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and, and finally with mnemonics, one, two, three, four, T, T, coffee, coffee, and then from there we're going to slide up and go four and five with our strong V, <laughs> and we're gonna try and strum that with our thumb, like that. These guys, they're here, but they're not plucking, they're not pressing, they're just resting, and that's gonna really help give me the control so I don't do this, because that doesn't sound good. So I just wanna strum my A and my D string, just nice and gently. And then from there, I think you're gonna probably prefer to move. So from there, you're gonna move up with your index, up to that dot, play those sevens. You can do it by using your little finger and you get more of a ring that way but can you see the strain on that little finger? It can do it but it would rather not do it so use your strong finger. You've got an open note immediately afterwards which will help you transition to the next shape anyway. Another way you can do this, I don't think you'll like it but I'll tell you it anyway. <laughs> 
Another way you could interpret this, if I go back to the A shape before, we could go into a very long D shape, shall we say. So it's a bit clunky because you've got to get into it, and that little finger isn't used to perhaps being used like this. But the idea being that that's your D, your F sharp, your A, and your D over there. So these two over here take the place of the sevens. Sorry, this hand keeps escaping. What are you doing? <laughs> Running away. So you still do your strum, and you still go index, middle, index. And you can still go straight to your open D afterwards and crack on with the next line. So one last time, if I go from the A, you can see, hopefully you can see the transition, which is slightly tricky, but you can also see the benefits of it, or hear the benefits, because the D chord keeps ringing. But I do have a delay. Okay, take a deep breath, guys. I think we better do the whole line. So let's go back to the beginning. This is bar five, but it looks like bar one on your screen now. We're going to do the whole line. Take your time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One. When you're practicing, do aim to hit that open D straight after you've done your sevens or your twos and threes. I feel like I should do that one last time with you guys. Line two. One, two, three, four. T, T, coffee, coffee, T, 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 coffee, coffee. Roll the shoulders. Time for another line. Now before we play this line, hopefully this is looking very, very familiar. This is literally the same as line one. So you've already played this. So we're gonna do it. <laughs> we're not gonna go for it individually. We're just gonna do the whole line. Let's do it. See how much you remembered. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And as I said before, if you need to rewind that and play it again, please do. If you need to slow it down, please do. But we're going to move on because we spend a long time on line one anyway. So the last line, the very last line, some shapes you already know. This is almost the same as line two, with the exception of the three bars at the end. So you're almost the same. So you already know this one. And you know this one. So bar three here is where it changes, now that is bar 15. So on this bar, definitely put your A down, look at all those twos. So no pull-offs at all, just a little bit of coordination from the right hand. So thumb, index, middle, index, middle, ring. Again, another nice little exercise you could take out if you're struggling with your Pima maybe. Let's do that one last time and see if you can sight read to the end because can you see there's no more pull-offs, it's nice and easy, you're just gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And I should have still counted to four at the end, sorry I got so into it I went wee! <laughs> Never mind. It was just the happiness of reaching the end, clearly. Um, hopefully you saw that I did put down the D chord because in that penultimate bar you got threes and twos again. So it's easier if you put the D down. Because it just makes everything simpler. And then the hard part, if you like, all the, the picking is the bit that I can focus on. I don't have to worry about my left hand because I just keep it down. So let's see if we can do the last line all together. Here we go. Pop down your D, keep it there. One, two, three, four. T, T, coffee, coffee, T, 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 coffee, coffee, T, 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 shoot. And there we go. 
Oh, see, I told you, nice simple rhythms. The hardest part is the coordination of this hand when it comes to this line. All right, let's see if we can go all the way through. This is the test, can we do it? All right, yes, of course we can. <laughs> Here we go then. We're gonna earn that cup of tea, I tell you. All right, I will count you in, but then I'm just gonna keep playing. Um, yeah, because there aren't any long notes, we just keep chugging along. So I won't keep counting as we go through, is what I'm trying to say, because that way you'll actually get used to hearing the melody. So here we go. One, two, three, four. A relief. <laughs> um, I know this one's slightly, slightly tricky, but um, I felt you could rise to the challenge, so well done. And please do take little bits out of this, use it as exercises to help you with other pieces that you may be playing. And just a reminder, I am posting my tabs now on my Patreon page, which is Rosanna Ball. So that is literally patreon.com slash Rosanna Ball. And you will see I've got my tabs attached to relevant videos there. So if you would like the tab, please do consider signing up. That would be great. Um, so yeah, I really hope this has helped you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.